Yesterday off, got back real uh, late, I think about 4.30 Sunday morning, so they got a chance to recover a little bit. We brought the guys in that needed the rehab and needed some of the things that to get done, and it was uh, pretty cool to see a bunch of other ones that were here too. And their calming influence of when they come in the building, they enjoy being around each other. And an awful lot of them were here yesterday, and then today's been a good day. It's always better after a, a really solid team win. It was good to see them step into a, an atmosphere on a Saturday night game at Denver. You know, it's always a pretty cool place to play. You know, in my uh, history, it's probably the warmest it's ever been in December that I've been up there and playoff games and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, but the guys played very well. A you know, very hard fought game, but a very good team game. And I. One of the things that we talked about in the team meeting was um, how all three phases complemented each other and did a really good job of understanding that in order to win close games, you have to be a team. The other thing we talked about in there really quickly in the team meeting was we've had the opportunity to win a couple of games by multiple scores. We've had a couple of games we've lost by multiple scores. But we've had this opportunity the past two weeks to win by one score or less. And winning close games, again, comes down to doing it as a team. You win, you win everything as a team, whether it's multiple everything, but it was a good emphasis for them to see of how everybody has to do their job, be on cue with everything, be on point with everything, and uh, it was a really good meeting. So now we're in there doing all the corrections from the past game. And then we'll get a jump start on the Bengals today. And then most, if not all of them, will be back in here tomorrow, even on their day off. Uh, we have a procedure that uh, those guys get ahead, and they do a great job on getting ahead before we ever come back in here on Wednesday. Questions? What did you say about this team's growth, Greg? You just touched upon it on how they were able to grind through. I mean, it wasn't perfect the other night by any means. but it, it, It's another step, and it's another validated step, I would say meaning that until you do it, you can't feel it. And now they feel it, and which is good. So Greg, I saw your um, explanation why you went for right. it. And you were lined up to go for it. So my question is, well, why did you call that timeout? I wish the timeout that I wish I could have had, it, but there was a little bit of confusion on uh, at that point in time on what play we were going to call. We were going to go for it no matter what. And uh, uh, that's the only way that uh, you have total control of get the first down, take a knee, it's over with. And I explained that to our team. It would be good for you to ask our team. You know, we just went through a, a long process in there uh, so of how you win special situation games. And, uh, you know, I've been a part of the games many years ago when the league started understanding of how you let somebody score to get back into it. I did that at the, the Redskins back when Andy was at the Philadelphia Eagles when we let Brian Westbrook score. And uh, we got back in the game and had a chance to go. And then a couple of years later, you know, Bryant, you know, pops one on us there at the Redskins and he takes a knee at the half yard line and they were able to close the game out. And the most important thing is even on that third down play, that third down play is a down down situation, meaning that you don't want to score. You want to get the first down 100 percent totally on your side now. Now take a knee. The game's over. No timeouts. Whether you kick a field goal, whether you score a touchdown, you got to go for two, whether you're not going to go for two, all those things come into it. And we needed to impose our will with a young team. It was a great way for a confidence booster for our team. Now we got to get better in that situation, and we'll continue to get better in those situations on how you win. Again, less than a yard. You know, we have some things that we've also turned in on, you know, was that a first down or not? And, you know, when you take a look at the spot of the ball, and we have some great pictures upstairs that we've passed on that shows, you know, that possibly that it was a first down. But in that situation, for a young team, and it's my call, okay, what a young team is impose your will, have total control of the win, take a knee, and after the first down, and the game's over. So that's just confusion on the yeah, play. I just, I just, I didn't. Uh, I thought there were still some things on the play call. What we we're trying to do is to make sure everything was calm for our guys to line up and do it. Question on Mayfield uh, in, in the context of uh, it looked like he had some obvious struggles uh, with his radar in the first half, but he's you know having a, a pretty good rookie year. Uh, that's the context. But the question is, uh, is it abundantly clear that he's the quarterback of the future uh, here and going to be one of the better ones? No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. 
the factors that, you know, that you know, I've been around a lot of really, really good ones. I've been around ones that aren't, and I've been around guys that, you know, as as rookies, as veterans, this is not an easy position to play. And in my personal opinion, you know, if not the hardest, but one of the most professionally hardest positions to play in any sport, in any professional sport, with the speed that, that goes on at this level, and uh, the young man has it, and. Each and every week, there's things that are just abundantly clear to how he handles stress, how he handles confusion, how he handles dysfunction. And we all, to be really good, you have to be masters of his dysfunction. And the best ones that I've ever been around handle that and uh, do a great job with it. And he's, and he's done very well. Each week is a learning experience. And we can practice, we can meet, we can do everything we want. But you got to be able to learn from the games and learn from the experience at full speed, and he does a great job with that. On that uh, first uh, part of the game, Greg, uh, it, is it fair to conclude that he was struggling with his radar? And what does it mean? No. That, uh, what, what was the, no, what he's fine. He, I'm just giving you my opinion. He's fine. Uh, for a couple weeks, you guys have talked about the playoff possibility, and now it's really convoluted and, and remote. Did you address that with them? You know, that'll be on Wednesday, but one of the things we do is, as Pat, is that you know, we're, we're looking at every week. Every game is important, and uh, we can't control those other factors, but we can control who we are, how we are going about doing it. So uh, don't have excuses, control who we are. And we're treating each and every week as that opportunity. Uh, two games left. How do you top Kobe Bryant as a pregame speaker? <laughs> he did a really good job, too, and it was fun. To, to see their reaction when uh, he came into the room because he means a lot to those guys. And I've said this, and hopefully it starts to become even more of a reality is, I really don't believe in one voice, but I do believe in one message. And the message can have as many voices as possible when it's the same way. And sometimes, you know, a different person like that that means a ton to these young guys. You know, um, it was perfect timing, and nobody knew about it, and I appreciate that. You know, and his, his coach, uh, one of his coaches, he's had several, but one of his coaches is a good friend of mine, too, and Phil Jackson. And, uh, you know, he and I go back to several different experiences together. Uh, but he came in, and uh, good timing to have these young men after he – delivered his message, just open it up and just talk. And the fun thing was for me to stand off to the side and see how focused and attentive everybody was in the room on everything that came out of his mouth. And uh, that was pretty cool. And uh, they're even talking about some things on the sideline at the end of the game, uh, in the locker room at the end of the game. Um, and then today, I, I hear some things where they're shooting some things back to me. Did you did you hear this, Coach? Did you did you did you hear him say this? And those are fun things about it. So it's a great message, and I appreciate his message. What were they most interested in? Pardon me. What were they most interested in? You no, know, the big thing is is just how to. It's not easy to be special. It's not easy to be looked at as one of the best of all time. And one of the things, the messages that we talk about all the time is, is that how can you be that person if you can't be the best of who you are? And, you know, sometimes we accept things that uh, on, on a particular day that that's not how you be the best of all time. you got to be the best who you are, who you're genetically blessed to be, and then let those, you know, let everything fall where they fall. And he did a great job with making sure, understanding that it doesn't make any difference if it's a pickup game if it's an argument, if it's a uh, championship game, you know, Kobe's going to win. And that's his thought process. And that's not easy to be that way all the time. And sometimes um, you do it in a way that's offensive, but other times it's in a very, very leadership way. And leadership comes from example first and voice second. And you got to be able to set the example first, and you know, and he uh, he has that documented. So now the voice is pretty easy to listen to. Greg, I know you said you got other things to focus on, but as the season winds down and you got something going here, um, do you think more and more how you want to keep this job going? You know, and I appreciate the answer to that. In all honesty, is that uh, I don't think it's fair 
to the players or to anybody here is that uh, the most important thing is making sure these guys understand how we continue to win and uh, how we get ready for the Bengals. And really, and when they see the mindsets that way, you know, that's that's the way my mindset has always been. We'll talk about that at the end. Every time you win, <clears throat> don't you feel like that burn it, you know, strengthens your I, resume? I'll never apologize that I love to win. <laughs> and I'll never apologize that I'm a competition-aholic. Okay, I, I stay away from a lot of things, but I don't stay away from competition, and I'm not afraid of that at any point in time. Is it fair to say that you do have the head coaching bug now and that I love I love what I do, Mary, and I really do. I, I love the fact of for my entire life, you know, I've had the opportunity at whatever level to be um, captain, you know, quarterback, pitcher, point guard, doesn't make any difference to, you know, head coach to assistant coach. And, you know, when you're when you're the head of a department, and, you know, when you're the head of a position group, when you're all of a sudden in charge, you, you got to be in charge. You know, it just it ramps up at each level you go to. But um, and I'm not afraid of that. Four and two, though, in six weeks, that, that's pretty hard to ignore. Yeah, you know, those two, those two I don't like. You know, those two that there were losses, you know, those, those are irritating. And we got to continue to uh, do everything we can to eliminate those two. We talked about that today, too. You know, that, that, that wasn't who we were. And, you know, at the time, maybe there was mm, a little bit of doubt. But when I said it today, there was nods. There was nods in the room. And uh, that's good when those young men see that. And they've had some really good opportunities. You know, another thing that we said in the room there was we passed out the game balls and stuff is that uh, Cole Quick got one of them. And I always love teaching, you know, our teasing punters and kickers because I've been a special teams coordinator too. And, uh, but, you know, we uh, have a chance here, not a chance, but you see we're the most number of inside the 20 punts in the history of the Cleveland Browns. That's not easy to do. And that's what you have to do when you're playing team game, you know, field position, every blade of grass type game. And when your punter gets that, that's huge, okay, on how you win um, very close games. So it's good to see that out of those guys. Joseph last week was uh, praising Mayfield for the way he's uh, playing in the context of uh, rookie quarterbacks. And he said, can you imagine what he's going to look like next year? Uh, what if all is he getting out of uh, this year toward uh, you know, you know the playing out? time you can't replace you really can't play you can't replace actual game speed playing time so uh, that will be good and then as we once we get to next year we'll think about that but in all honesty the great thing about the young man is is that he's strutting walking up down the hallway talking about the Bengals today I mean, he, he's all of a sudden, you know, to everybody else in the room, let's not, let's not forget about, what, you know, what, what, what's up for this week. And then when that's coming out of your guy's mouth that's doing the most talking during the game anyway because he's calling the plays, you know, Schobert's that same way too. You guys don't see behind the scenes all the things that he does behind the scenes on the meetings that he will have when the coaches get done today with different position groups and the meetings that he will have tomorrow Minus the coaches being around. You got two pretty good guys right now playing quarterback on each side of the ball. And we got to continue to build off of that. Will you keep up the intensity uh, amongst your players, even though for all intents and purposes, uh, the playoffs really are not a realistic that's a, And that's a good question, too. And, and, and please take for this for in the context. If I have to worry about that, we have the wrong people. And that people don't understand that when you ask about motivation, and you ask about intensity, we're inside the white lines, okay? Let's roll, okay? And, and if that becomes a factor, the most important thing that I have to do is recommend to people upstairs that guy doesn't belong. Hey, Greg, what kind, of, what kind of feedback are you getting now from John Dorsey? Good. I mean, it, he, and I, he and I meet and talk every day. You know, we've done that from – Really, all, since he got got in here last year, you know, he was, you know, he, he searched me out right when he got here last year, and uh, because he and I go so far back in the league, so in helping him transition into last year, you know, that 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 was I was a voice in the room, and like I've told you guys, nobody's asked me, you know, for the pictures I have on him, huh. and uh, so you know, and, and so I mean I, he he just wants to make sure I don't post those pictures. So we have that conversation every day. No, I'm just kidding you. But yeah, we, we, we uh, there, there's times of every day we do it. 
and uh, it's uh, it's good that you know he understands so much about the the actual instincts of playing the game and the instincts of calling the game and the instincts of you know motivating people. So yeah, we're 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 good with that. Along those lines. Do you think that's the thing that you've done best here in, in your time as interim is, is motivating these guys? I mean, what what is your fingerprint on this team that's made that? I believe all good players, you know, want to be taught or coached, motivated and inspired. Everybody does. But then when the motivation and inspiring thing becomes way too primary, it's once again, why are you here? It's, it's our job to get everybody on the same page, treat everybody the same way, hold everybody accountable. And it starts with me first. I have to be the same accountable, say what I mean, mean what I say. And, you know, first one here, last one to leave. You know, I learned this a long time ago too, is that, you know, being on time. Being on time tells everybody exactly right. You know, when people aren't on time, maybe it's because only two things I tell these guys. Either it's not important to you or you think you're better than everybody else. That don't work in this league. It doesn't work. So that's why I'm the first one in the meeting room. Nobody's waiting on me and uh, we got to get ready to roll. If you let's just say that you win these next two games, what what does a team need to do to uh, be in that elite class next year or beyond? And those are those are be really good things that we'll talk about, you know, when it comes to the off season. But right now is we have to we really have to be dedicated and focused on this next game. You a couple more here. Since you took over, you talked a lot about belief and getting the guys to believe. That was your speech after I think the first win. Mm -hmm. Some of the players have kind of echoed that. How do you think you've gotten them to make that jump? I really believe the word and why I use that, and I think I said this back several weeks ago too, is was to be calming. Okay, get rid of the distractions. Okay, and um, belief is a feel, and then once you feel it, you truly believe it, and now we move on. So we we just had to eliminate some distractions and get on about our job, and don't be afraid to do our job every single day. Come in come in with that mindset, and they've done a very good job with that. And that was one of the reasons we had that context of belief. Well, like the fourth down decision, like mm -hmm. the confidence that builds. Can you see it happening every week? Where mm -hmm. now it's you went on the road. Now see, I see it every day. I see it every day when they're on time in the meetings. I see it every day with how we go about, you know, practicing and competing. I see it every day. You know, with the attention in the locker room and attention on game day and attention on sideline. And it just builds and builds and builds. And it's not easy to do at this level. But you can do it. And you, you just have to continue to walk the line and, and believe what you say, say what you mean, and everybody else follows when the right people are in place. You feel like the last six games has finally flipped the losing culture? that Browns have struggled with. Well, I would say that our guys are, our guys understand there's a good young team in there. Okay, and we got to continue uh, to focus on week after week after week. Don't look ahead. Do not look ahead. That's when things start to maybe uh, become more distractions that we're just talking about. So take it, take it for what it is. Are they, uh, the Pro Bowl stuff is announced. Are there any guys or? Hoping to get recognition. You know, I, I love all those things, you know, with our guys, and we'll see. You know, and I really haven't had any taken time to think about it, haven't looked at rankings, haven't looked at all that kind of stuff. So we'll see how it is tomorrow. And But I, I do, I think I have said to you before, is I, I really take it uh, to heart when, uh, and I've had the opportunity of many, many times for a lot of years when you see those guys that, you know, come out undrafted and have earned their spot every single day. And all of a sudden, they've moved up a few years into the profession, and then they make the Pro Bowl. Those are those are pretty cool, you know. I, I always try to see which one of those kind of guys they are. But you know, love that those individual things is fine. But the team stuff is the most primary thing that we have to look forward to. It's about team goals. A lot of pride in the fact that, um, and I'm sure the team probably does too, the fact that uh, when you look at Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, J.J. Watt, and Jadavian Clowney, one sack from all those yes. four guys. And that's and that I, I we do as a team, yes. And it shows us once again that uh, young men, young men in that locker room belong. And it does show the young men in that locker room that uh, maybe we know a little bit about what to do in coaching too. But then Zelda's future, hopeful. He's he's still in the protocol, but is moving in a positive fashion. So we'll see, and I'll know a little bit more at the end of the day. But felt good about it. All right.
Mm -hmm. You talked about the down-down situation at the end. Mm -hmm. Say you score and you go up seven. Mm -hmm. You go for one or two. Yeah, those are questions that we have to, don't have to worry about. If, 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 if they go down, down, I don't put my foot in some place where they don't need to have it, then I'd have to make that decision. But uh, the thing is down, down, and I think they'll all tell you about that is down, down. Hmm? The adjustments that Mayfield made before the touchdown pass to Cal. Pretty doggone good. And it was him. How advanced is that? That's outstanding. And it can't be that simple. Okay? It can't be that simple. And we do the same thing, and you, there's so much of the game that you don't see that Schobert does the same thing. Schobert made so many different little bitty plays in a game that were similar to that. And <clears throat> without giving away too much, I probably am by saying this, the end of the game, walk-off sack, Jabril Peppers made the same type of on-field adjustment that Baker Mayfield did on that touchdown to win the game for us. And those are the things that I learned from Buddy Ryan. And then when I got placed in charge to start giving players some decisions, I'm not afraid to give players that type of power on the field as long as they do what I tell them to do. And Jabril Peppers made a tremendous adjustment to the play call because of what he knew they were going to do. Okay, it's still the same play, but what does the offense do? And that's what Baker did. Baker, we had the play call, boom. He saw what they're in, doesn't make any difference, but Freddie and I think it's what Baker sees. And that's another step, okay, that you have to have. And the big time guys do that all the time, okay? And from Drew to Warren Moon to Steve McNair to all the different, you know, different people I've been around, Joe Montana, Peyton Manning, you know, Peyton Manning used to have three play calls in his helmet. And then he would get rid of all three and do what he wanted to do once he saw something like that. And that's what Baker did. <laughs>